What happened last time we did these? Did it get sore? <laughs> welcome to my bathroom and welcome to the week. I just did a quick little workout. I'm trying to do my workouts first thing in the morning or as close to first thing in the morning now just because I find that when I push it off and I'm doing workouts at home, it just doesn't quite happen as consistently as I need it to, especially um, since I use fitness and nutrition as a way to help manage my mental health. Because I am pregnant, I've noticed I get back knee and chest knee, and especially with wearing a mask when I'm out and about, I get um, a little more congestion in certain areas. Now, I haven't dealt with back knee since maybe my teens and early 20s, and back then I used to treat it with salicylic acid, and I can't do that right now while pregnant. I can use salicylic acid under 2%, but I just try to be safe and not use it in general, especially in a body wash where I'm using it a lot. What I have been doing is using some of my Derma E products that do not have salicylic acid in it and do it more as a preventative for back knee. And this isn't just for hormonal back, back knee, which I have. It also is great for the seasons when you tend to get back knee, which is when it's hotter out, when it's humid out, and also when you're just sweating more. So this is a great tip for those of you guys who work out a lot. I used to be a dancer, so I was just in sweat all day, and especially around the summer times, that's why I would break out with back knee. This is my preventative routine for back knee, chest knee, and mask knee. I like to do it at least twice a week, and if my skin is acting up, I bump up the this routine up to three even five days a week because it is all very gentle but effective as many of you guys might know I am a proud partner with Derma E for 2020 which means I'm part of the Derma E squad which means I get to test out pretty much whatever I want to test out from Derma E and share the products that work for me in my routine with you guys so a portion of this video is part of my partnership with Derma E for 2020. This is something that I will use in the shower on my back and on my chest. This is the Derma E Purifying Daily Detox Scrub. And I use this at least twice a week during back knee season. I'd be like, Serena, how do you get that on your back and your chest? Here's how I do it. I get in the shower and I like rinse off a little bit just with water. And then I have one of these types of brushes. It's just a wooden natural bristle brush. Once I get kind of water all over me, I then apply purifying daily detox scrub. And this mainly uses charcoal, which is a great detoxifier. It's natural, it's clean, it's toxic free. All Derma E products are vegan, cruelty free, toxic free, and they focus on sustainable packaging. I squeeze like um, maybe a quarter size amount onto my brush and then I reach back and start massaging it into this area, which is where I really get the back knee, the center of my back up my neck and then the backs of my shoulders. And then when I go behind, I'm able to get that other area, my bra strap area, which is also an area of concern. And for the front of my chest, I just massage this all over my chest. You can see this is actually a scar because I keloid easily from a breakout a few years ago. My face, this is something I've really been enjoying after workouts, especially if I work out during the day. This is the Derma E Vitamin C Gentle Daily Cleansing Paste. I use this day and night after an oil cleanse or a balm, makeup removing balm, if I'm wearing makeup at night. This is really, really awesome. It has a brightening effect with the vitamin C. There's also this nice little bit of like granule but not abrasive and it just does a great job at exfoliating, detoxifying my skin and everything. So I'm gonna do all of that in the shower and then something else that I do is use the Derma E Purifying 2-in-1 Charcoal Mask. Now this comes in a bottle bottle but they were sold out so I have some of these little packets. So what I do with this is if I'm gonna be really extra 
and for sure maybe once a week once every other week what i do with this mask is i actually apply it on my chest i'm not breaking out so much but honestly it's a testament to my little back knee routine is after i cleanse and do all that stuff i put a layer of this in the shower i don't worry about being kind of still uh, wet and I apply it all over my chest and all over my back once again using my scrubby brush and I let it sit for a minute I don't let it sit too long and then I rinse it off you could potentially like wake up before you get sweaty and apply this all over your chest and your back before you go into the shower as well and then you can just rinse it off there's so many ways you can use the purifying two-in-one charcoal mask this is just really really good this was actually the first product i ever tried from derma e i think i want to say five years ago that is going to be my shower routine in there i would demo it all but i don't want to have to bleep everything out and i'm also pregnant so you know that's like awkward too i am gonna hop in the shower and sh do everything i just did wash my hair and then i'll show you how i kind of prep my skin for the rest of the day okay i'm fresh out of the shower and if i have any breakouts that's actually happening or i feel like is coming up what i'll do is use the derma e anti-blemish clarifying biface toner this uses tea tree oil which is safe for me during pregnancy i spoke with my doctor about it but as always if you are pregnant please speak with your doctor and it also has vitamin e and rose water so it's not super drying using one of my reusable bamboo rounds I just like to soak this thing up. I don't have any active breakouts right now, but I do like to target this on my hairline, my T-zone, and anything that sits under a mask. This will just help it keep it nice and clear and avoid congestion. Applying a little facial oil that is also high in vitamin C and antioxidants. Some vitamin C serum, which is always good to protect your skin from environmental stress and pollution, as well as recover from it. I to give myself a little bit of a wake up, depuff, a little eye cream. And another trick I've learned recently, especially if you might be wearing a mask for any part of your day, is to use lighter products. So you want lighter serums, lighter moisturizers, lighter SPFs. So I am going to use the Derma E Hydrating Day Cream. It has hyaluronic acid and green tea, but it's very lightweight and perfect for the daytime. It's still very hydrating and moisturizing and protects your skin but it's not super heavy like some of the creams I was using, which ends up just kind of clogging my pores underneath a mask. And I don't know that I will wear a mask today, but I am planning to get some groceries for the house for the week because we've just been depleted and eating out, meaning like getting takeout and eating it in the car too much. And that's just never good. I like to know what I'm eating, have a little more control over it and make better choices by having better food at home. I will probably be going to the store for that, but I don't plan on really being out beyond that. And I did talk about this SPF in my SPF tips, hacks, how to reapply and favorite SPFs so far for 2020. So I won't talk about it too much here, but I'll link that video in the cards and in the description box. This is the All Support Performance Face SPF 30. It's very lightweight no weird white cast absorbs nicely wears nicely it's pretty much it for my face I do feel like self tanning a little bit today just because i feel a little more confident especially um on my legs and thighs if i have a little bit more of a tan and i am trying to see out the sun plus i don't really leave the house what did we just go do Ka what did you do before that that gave you a heart attack, literally? So, we're in the market for a new car, or a, a, a second car. I hate dealing with car people. Something that gives me an insane amount of anxiety. I don't like it. I don't like talking to them. I don't like being in that environment. So every time I'm in there, I get an insane level of anxiety. But this time, it was do. not him whatsoever. It was very 
not pushy, not salesy. Yeah, I just don't like being there. So we're getting acai. <laughs> yeah, getting acai so I can mellow out and feel better about myself. Can I tell them what I did today? Yes, please. I paid off one of my credit cards Boom. completely. Boom. I'm sure you guys know, and if you don't, now you know. I have a little bit of debt. I'm not proud of it, but it was really important for me to pay it off before we tried to have a baby. We would have paid it off, but then COVID-19 happened and instead of paying the cards off, everything kind of, all our deals kind of were in limbo. And AdSense views went down for whatever reason. You would think more people would be watching YouTube, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason, it's gone back up now. Our deals that were on pause have like continued, but there was like a weird period where we just didn't make anything. We didn't make anything, money wasn't coming in and we weren't sure when it was gonna come in. So we kind of just like, we're like, okay, well, good thing we have this money yeah. saved. We were working with people and things were just kind of slow roll. So we we're still living off of the, what would have gone towards debt. But. Today. <laughs> one whole card is paid off and will not be used. It's going. It's going in the freezer. Ever again. Side note. Just because I gave myself brain freeze just now. If you if you've never seen the videos online of cats getting brain freeze from licking ice cream cones, it's one of the most fascinating things you will ever see in your life. And if you so choose to go and YouTube that, I will not think less of you. But finish watching this video first. <laughs> 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 so it was a pretty big chunk, and then this one, the next card we're working on is the one that I do use for all of my bills and kind of like what I use. Business expenses. Yeah. And that one got a little out of control because there was a little bit of a slow period a few years ago and we just weren't able to catch up. This is one of those things where like... It's uncomfortable for us to talk about. And I don't think it's something that's talked about enough. Would you guys want, because as we're rebranding things like the podcast and whatnot, I think it would be very nice if we had someone that was an expert in debt and how to use debt to your advantage as opposed to uh, acquire debt that puts you behind the eight ball. So if any of you guys are out there that are in a similar position, um, would I it be feel, beneficial to like hear talking that? talking to my brother would be great. The problem is he's like so not podcast personable. He's like, well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I was always told don't get yourself in debt but that's not it's like telling someone not to have sex sometimes life throws you sometimes shit happens how the best way to accumulate the debt or how to keep it under control and things like that also what's the best way to get out of it like, i think asia does a good job i think they're a very good job and the hard thing is if i had a set salary I would know how to get out of it, but no one teaches you or rights for people that have kind of our situation. We have, we don't have a set salary. We we have payroll for ourselves, like we as our company, but. That goes right back into the business. Yeah. There's a lot, of, I feel like we should have our accountant on the podcast. Mm -hmm. mm. Then she learned so much more about me that I don't want her to know. I also, like, as much as I want to recommend them, like, She's our little secret weapon. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to keep her to ourselves. I mean, she's not really secret. If you're my friend and ask me, I tell you. Yeah, for sure. But. Um, I've recommended so many people to them. Oh, that is going to die. But yeah. On my way to debt free. Happy Wednesday. I am going to do my workout. I just sent out my weekly newsletter for those who want weekly updates. I'm gonna probably promote the giveaway for July one more time because I'll be picking the winner this weekend. There will be actually three winners for July. Huge prizes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you really should be following me on Instagram. But I have a blog and that blog has a newsletter with an email list. If you sign up for my email list, you will get an email at most once a month and I announce my monthly giveaways which are huge boxes of beauty products and wellness products and because I haven't done one in 2020 yet I am doing a three winner one so Chris is gonna have a minor heart attack when the shipping cost arrives <laughs> he just looked at me like what <laughs> okay let's work out
flirt pole for Chance to work on his agility. He already has tangled himself up. Okay. We're not playing ball. <laughs> A few moments later. Melissa's flirt pull recommendation is a winner when you can't walk him for three miles. Because this man has so much energy, Chris has to hike him for at least two to three miles for him to like calm down. 15 minutes of the flirt pull and he's dead. He's been dead for hours. And he kept like fussing, laying on the ground. So Chris went and got his bed and brought it downstairs for him. I told you we needed to get a bed for downstairs. No, we don't. We just take this one back up and down. <sighs> they didn't move. Yeah, by the way, he does not normally let us share his bed. That's not, this isn't normal. Best 20 bucks <laughs> I've ever spent. <laughs> I just vacuumed. <laughs> He's gonna shed everywhere. It's Friday. Party. I just stopped by the Nespresso boutique to pick up some capsules because Chris told me that we were out of coffee like I guess a week ago and he swears that he told me and that I heard him and said okay but I never ordered it <laughs> and I don't remember this conversation. <laughs> Hashtag pregnancy brain. I would like to say I eat so much salmon and dried anchovies that this baby has plenty of omega-3s and DHAs so she should not be sucking my brain but apparently she's gonna suck my brain. <laughs> the Nespresso Boutique in Beverly Hills is like taking COVID very seriously and I appreciate that. They even have like a jar of used pens and a jar of clean pens. Yeah. That's my biggest pet peeve is like, I'll go somewhere and they'll have the shield, they'll make everyone wear a mask, they'll sanitize and then they'll be like, please sign here. <laughs> and I look at the pen and I'm like, I carry a pen in my, in my uh, fanny pack. I carry a pen now thanks to Susan at my bank because she was like, here's a fresh pen and she didn't touch it. She had it in a jar and she's like, touch one and take it with you. Yeah. Uh, it's so nice in there. It's like so quiet and clean and everybody's taking it seriously. I don't have to touch the door handle. Someone opens it for you. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like the staff is being protected too. Yeah. You know, I've never had a bad experience in there, like ever. We're talking about the Nespresso Boutique on Beverly Hills. Don't ever, ever go to the one in Topanga Canyon. Oh or yeah. Topanga, that was the worst experience ever. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, we took our old machine in because apparently- There's a whole vlog about this. Oh, there is? Oh, okay. Yes. Apparently when you bring in a broken machine and tell them what's wrong with it, they go- Well, that's not good. No, well, no it, shit. It was worse than that. Well, that's not good. <laughs> and then blank stare. And like Chris and I were like, well, I think I said, you think? Well, you're like, that's why we're here. Yeah, better from there. Like, it's not like he was like, he realized, oh, I was being silly. Like, he continued to dig his own, like, hole. I'm like, how are you employed in a customer service position? Makes no sense. I don't know, and I thought it didn't make sense when I was employed in customer service. Uh, honey, I might need to run out and grab one of those exercise balls over there. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they're just giving them away for free because <laughs> they're not closed in, no fence around them. <laughs> Those aren't exercise balls, they're just balloons. Not much has been going on this week. I've been having a lot of emotional meltdowns, so I haven't been on camera a lot because the last thing I want to do is vlog my... How does it feel to be on the, the receiving end? Of 
your emotional meltdown? Yeah. It's taxing. It's very taxing because I have to find a balance of accommodating what you're going through, but also not a, a letting it affect me too much because it's not about me. And that's the most difficult part to learn is that it has nothing to do with me and you're not upset with me or at me or it's nothing that I did. It's just you're, you're having a moment and I have to allow you the space to go through it, but also can't be too distant because that's not good either. So it's just, it's very taxing to know. But I've never said it was you. No, it's not that you say it's me, but whenever, whenever you're upset, like, I tend to internalize it as, you know, it's, it comes from my childhood. I'm very like, clear with why I'm upset. Well, yes, but in, you are, but you also say, when I ask you if anything's wrong, you say, no, nothing, for about three days, when clearly there is something wrong. So it's hard to know what's the truth and what's not the truth. Um, so again, partly because of how I grew up, I internalize everything as it's my fault. Um, and so... But when I tell you what's wrong, I'm very clear and specific. I know exactly what's wrong. Yes, that's true. But again, it has less to do with you and more about my own internal way I process things. It's also that I have to be able to give you the space to, to go through it. Um, while also not coming off as distant or as that I'm angry or upset with you, even though I might be... Uh, feeling a certain way towards the, the current way you're, you're feeling. So it's just hard. It's taxing. It's, it's very difficult to, to manage that on my end as a spouse. But I do it again. And then I said Chance to cheer you up. He hasn't. He's annoyed me. Well, no. He tries to wake you up in the mornings, but you don't wake up. <laughs> He's like, Dad, I'm going to go get Mom up. Okay, I tried heating it up. I'm gonna he, go back upstairs. You didn't send him. No, he does it on his own. Yeah, it's so annoying. He's like, I'm gonna go do it again. I and he comes back down. It didn't work. I'm gonna go try again. I'll <laughs> roll over and this morning I like French kissed him and I was like <laughs> half asleep because I rolled over and he could like lick you in the face. He's tall enough now, so he shoved his entire nuzzle, muzzle muzzle yeah. into my lips. And I was like, what is that wet thing? Like <laughs> I woke up in shock thinking like you were slobber kissing me. <laughs> yeah. And then he whines. Like for a giant ass dog, he's such a whiner. A little bit of a whiner. Well, last night I was getting out of the shower and trying to dry off and I bent over and <laughs> put his nose right in my taint. <laughs> Talk about a a moment that will send shivers down your spine. <laughs> that is a wake up call. Oh my god. Chance is such a character. He has literally been the best addition to our life. I thus don't know far. about that. He's destroyed a lot of property. Not really. Like, it's all been stuff that's not that, you know. My tree. Not that big a deal. And he got some major diarrhea as a result of it, so <laughs> he paid the price. He's such a freaking character. He really is. <laughs> I feel bad for our neighbors sometimes. Because he's not doing anything other than walking, but he's so loud. He's just so big. Like, he, he picks his feet up and puts them down like an elephant. Like, go, 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 go. Oh, when he's coming up the stairs. <laughs> He's like a fumbly little kid, like, trying to get up the stairs, like, come, come. Well, and then whenever we leave, his howls. Yeah, his, his broken-hearted teenager howls. He stops eventually. He just... Yeah, he doesn't do it for long. It's only like a minute or so. Yeah, but I'm sure it annoys people. But we can't do anything. Like, you can't, like, go back up and give him attention because you can't reward that kind of behavior. It prolongs the howling. COVID has not been good for his separation anxiety. No. Good morning. Um, well, afternoon at this point. I'm gonna show you guys my meatball recipe. I think I actually might film it for IGTV for Kitchen Hacks. This will help me, but we're just kind of cleaning up the house, taking care of some, you know, weekend chores. I have the robot vacuuming for me. <laughs> and Chance says he's done. 
Cue the howling. Watch, she's not gonna do it now. They then had to package each cookie individually because they literally came out of the oven. But you don't understand how much this is gonna be worth it when I can eat it in five minutes. Mm. They're the best chocolate chip cookies ever. Yeah, they really are. Oh, I feel the warmth of this <laughs> cookie. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. <laughs> we just left Lowe's and um, the, there was another nursery that we left as well because it was just challenging. But anyways, we were kind of having a rough day. And then we stopped at this new nursery, Moon Valley Nurseries. And I was just asking the guy like, hey, I'm trying to repot my fiddle, leaf, fiddle fig leaf plant because my dog dug it up. I just need some soil and some and a stick. And he's like, oh, good luck. <laughs> I know, I know. I just, cause it's like really finicky. They're really known to be finicky and to repot them is like one of the hardest things to do to keep them alive. And so he was just like, you know what, just take a, I don't have any sticks, but take a bag of potting soil on, a, on me. And I was like, that's so nice. Like he doesn't know us. We've, we've never been there before. It was just really, really nice. Yeah, that was a very nice gesture. Like so if we need anything, we're coming to that place. Yeah. Well, you wanted to buy lavender or rosemary. Yeah, so there's some plants that you can get to keep mosquitoes away twofold. They don't like them and also they attract dragonflies and dragonflies eat mosquitoes. So I wanted to get some lavender and um, some lemongrass and some other plants that will help us keep our mosquito population down. So you can get it here? Oh, heck yeah, I'm probably back. Um, but yeah, so Chris from Moon Valley Nursery in the valley Check them out, moonvalleynurseries.com. That was just like, honestly, I don't think he realized how much that just turned our day around. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, so that was awesome. I don't know, they had like everything. I don't know if they have like indoor plants, but they had pretty much every outdoor plant. Oh yeah, this place is huge. Yeah, and it's all outdoors, so you can feel safe. Um, we're here on a weekend and we were wearing masks, but there was plenty of space. Yeah. So. 